Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. You know, you go out and buy a new computer nowadays, it's going to have Windows 11 on it. Um, you might be able to get a business class PC with a downgrade to Windows 10 Pro, but eh, eh, it's getting harder and harder to do. Uh, we're looking at probably by the end of the year uh, bringing Windows 11 Pro into our business customer environment. <laughs> that being said, uh, if you're an end user and you're buying a Windows PC, you're probably going to get one shipped with Windows uh, 11 Home on it. Um, now, me personally, I like to run the Windows Pro version because I take advantage and use all of the tools, extra tools that are available in Windows Pro, such as virtualization and um, oh, networking and stuff like that. But if you have no need for that, there's no reason for you to spend the extra money for Windows Pro. Windows 11 Home will do just about everything that you want it to do uh, if you're a home user. <clears throat> if you're an amateur radio operator, want to run digital modes, things like that, it'll Windows Home will work. However, Windows Home 11 has added a bit of a sticky bug in the mix. Um, in order to set up Windows 11 Home, when you bring the computer home, you have to have internet. If you do not have internet, it stalls in the middle of the installation with a screen that you just can't continue from um, without having internet. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that if you're installing an environment like an emergency operations center or something like that that doesn't have internet, you're dead in the water. You can't get it installed. You have to take it someplace where there's internet. Um, also, even if you do have internet and you're installing it, let's say, in um, a shared environment like an EOC or something like that or a radio room, um, it's going to want you to create an online account. Now, somebody's got to manage that online account. Somebody's got to kind of be the owner of that online account. Somebody's going to have to associate a recovery email with that online account. Somebody's going to have to give out the password to that online account. I mean, an online account is not a great thing in environments where you don't want to use a cloud or you don't want to use any of the additional fun things that store stuff online for you and store all your search information and everything else uh, to be used on all of your systems. Okay. Now, if you like the idea of having all your documents up on the cloud automatically and you're not currently doing that with other services, go ahead and use an online account. If you're currently using an online account at home, and you get a new PC, go ahead and use that same online account. If you're happy with that and you're comfortable with that, that's fine. Okay. Uh, again, in an environment where you want a local account, there's got to be a way to do it, right? Well, we're going to show you how to do it at the installation. By the way, if you set it up with an online account, you can go in later and create a local account and all sorts of other stuff. It's kind of complicated. Uh, but... You know, it takes a little bit of knowledge to do the install without internet, too. So let's go ahead and... Di oh, hey, before we go any farther, please don't forget, subscribe, will you? more subscribers I have, the more people my videos get in front of makes me a better instructor. Um, also, uh, if you like the video, hey, give me a thumbs up, will you? Click like. Um, and uh, hey, any questions or comments, make them down below. So with that, let's get on to it. Well, all right. We're at the initial installation screen right here of Windows 11 Home. Now, what I have hooked up here is nothing more than the monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse. No network is hooked up. No wireless network is configured or anything else, okay? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to answer the initial questions. Uh, what country or region? I'm in the United States here in California. Um, and my keyboard is a U.S. style keyboard. I could add if I had, uh, you know, a different language that I knew how to type in. I could add a different keyboard here. I'm just going to select skip. Well, will you look at this? 
Let's connect you to the network. You'll need an internet connection to continue setting up your device. Once connected, you'll get the latest features and security updates. Uh, now, this will not basically allow me to continue during or through normal channels at least getting this installed without an internet connection. Now, a little bit of information. If I was on 11 Pro, right down here uh, next to the next button would be install without internet, okay, or continue without internet. And I'd be able to continue through the process. Now, um, for a lot of people, this means going and grabbing a long cable or doing this or doing that or figuring out how to get this machine onto the internet to be able to install it. For other people who have just hooked everything up, it'll just blow right past this and you'll be in another situation where you have to create an online account to continue. There is a way around that and I'll continue that uh, with the next shot. But uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to use a magic sequence of keys. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to press the F10 key. And bada bing, bada boom, I get a command prompt. From here, I'm going to go into the task manager. And the command to get into task manager is T-A-S-K-M-G-R. That's Tango Alpha Sierra Kilo Mike Golf Romeo. Hit enter. And there's the little, little bitty tiny little tiny chip. Yeah, I know, I know. Click on more details down here in the bottom left corner and scroll down in the background processes until you find network connection flow. Let's go ahead and highlight it. I'll just click it one time with the mouse button and then I will right hand mouse click it and I will click on end task. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and close this window and close that window and look at where I am. Look at that. I can now enter a normal account name. So I'm just going to kind of blow through this really quick. Let's see. We'll do EOC for the account name. Set a password. Doesn't have to be long. I can eliminate the password later. Doesn't really matter because it's not an online account, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. There, Debbie. Ugh. I hate these questions. Uh, let's see. Ah, what city was I born in? I don't know. I, I don't really remember. I was awfully young at the time. Anyway, uh, what was your childhood nickname? Oh, I don't know. Homer. Why not, right? Okay. So now I can choose my privacy settings and stuff like that. You can always go back in uh, to configuration and change this. I typically turn all this stuff off, especially if the computer is going to be like a, in an emergency operations center radio room or something like that. Uh, you can leave whatever on that you want. Um, most folks that I know just turn it all off. So through the wonders of editing, uh, this is going to go ahead and I will come back when we're back at the main menu just to show you real quick uh, what we have. And then uh, we'll do a second one of these with the internet hooked up at the time of install to show you another trick to get through this, okay? Be right back. Well, all right, so here we are, initial installation screen. We made it all the way in. You're going to see a bunch of stuff here, right? Uh, with little grayed out things. That's all the stuff that it installs online during the installation, okay? Now, um, if we are basically really don't have internet, we're done, okay? If we do have internet, though, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go down and we're going to want to restart. And while we're restarting, I'm going to want to go in here. I'm going to want to reach behind. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to reach back. Actually, all I'm doing is enabling the Internet here. But we'll go ahead and do that. And we're going to go through the uh, reboot here. Now, this will come up with Internet. So let's go ahead. Do our login. And there we go. Now we do have internet. Over time, this thing's going to annoy us to 
go with an online account to, uh, you know, enhance our experience. And as long as we're hooked to the Internet, it will ask to do that. Matter of fact, I've heard reports that even if it's disconnected from the Internet, it bugs you to do that and then tells you to connect to the Internet. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, look at all the stuff that's shown up here, right? Now that we're on the Internet, it can download this stuff. I'm going to go ahead to System, though, and I want to scroll down to Windows Updates, and I'm going to do the most important part. I'm going to do all the initial security updates. I'm probably even going to download and install this cumulative update. I mean, I'm going to tell it to do it all. And it's gonna. All right. Now, let's take a look at what happens if we try to do the install with the cable connected. All right. So here we are with the network cable plugged in during the install. So again, same thing. Choose our keyboard. Don't add anything. Now, See what happened? Now we're going to checking for updates. It found the network. Now, look, it's asking me for a machine name. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. We'll just call it Windows Home. Oh, let's do Windows 11 Home. Notice I have dashes in there, no spaces or things like that. Um, and I'll click Next. And now it's going to say just a moment. I'm going to restart, do this, do that, does all sorts of things like that. Now what it's actually doing is it's checking to see if that name's already in use. All right. Now we have to add an account. So it doesn't give me any other options. No account? Create one. Sign in with the security key. Sign in options. All right. I can go to sign in options and it really isn't going to help. Nothing's going to keep me from having to do an online account. So I'm not sure if this was a bug or design flaw. I don't know if this is going to go away someday. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the network cable. Just like that. And I'm going to click next. Click next. I'm going to go back. And there we go. Now I can again create an online account. Right? So we'll call this one EOC. And we'll set the password. Just like that. It helps if you put in the same password. There we go. And of course, back to our security question. And no, those aren't the answers I usually use. But you see we're in the same spot we were before. The only real difference is that we got some of the updates out of the way before we started. Also, if you forget to disconnect the network, this is the way out. Okay? Ah, and we go through this again. Anyway, we'll hook the network cable back up, do the updates, and bada bing, bada boom. We've now managed to run a local account on our Windows Home uh, 11 machine. Well, okay, you got the whole thing. I like the first method personally. Um, you know, it's a lot cleaner. I'm not reaching around, unplugging stuff and doing stuff like that in the middle of the install. Uh, I'm not waiting for, you know, all the early updates to take place. You still got to do more updates. I mean, that's the part I didn't show, even if you do it that way. So my personal opinion is it probably doesn't matter if it's plugged in or whatever at that point. Um, but 
hey, whichever one looks easiest for you to do, that's great. And hey, um, I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a like down below and uh, don't forget to subscribe. This is Stu, AG6AG, and I hope I hear you out there on the air.